All right, I would like to thank all of you for attending today. We had about 100 people register, so a few people may come in late. I'm expecting about 50 or so people today um, to join us for our Neil Squire first ever event for global accessibility awareness today. So my name's Chad. I'm the fellow on the right of that picture. Our other host is Ryan Thomas. He's the fellow on the left of the picture. And for those of you uh, who aren't sure the guy in the middle is, that's actually Martin Dugiamis, the uh, original developer of Moodle and still leads the project to this day. And uh, he's not with us today, but um, he actually gives a little promotional love on Twitter, which was really great. So just to give everyone a little bit of background, Ryan and I work for the Neil Squire Society. And it's an organization that focuses on empowering people with physical disabilities through technology. Uh, we have offices across Canada, and a lot of programming is centered around how computer technology can empower a person with a disability, and also how to help people transition back into being included more in society, whether that's finding volunteer opportunities, finding employment opportunities, or returning to school. So Ryan and I have done many webinars. This is our first webinar as part of Global Accessibility Awareness Day, which is today. So around the world, uh, I think there are about 15 community-based events, so community-based meetups, uh, where people are talking about accessibility. There are a number of employers that are hosting events. PayPal uh, is one of them. I can remember off the top of my head. But check out the website. There's a bunch of different activities going around today really trying to aware, raise awareness of digital accessibility and things that people should take in mind to keep in mind in regards to digital accessibility. So Ryan and I are doing this for free, but we did have a couple sponsors that helped us out with this. Lambda Solutions was one of them. And they helped us reach out to a lot of users in the Moodle community and promote this webinar. Lambda Solutions is a Moodle host based in Vancouver, one of the three Canadian partners. So if you're looking for help with your Moodle installation, be it theming, customization, hosting, training, Lambda, they're your folks. Uh, also, uh, Lambda does offer free Moodle monthly webinars. So if this is your first sort of Moodle webinar, Lambda offers them once a month, usually the last Thursday of every month. So you can get your Moodle on with Lambda Solutions. Our other sponsor today is Inclusive Media and Design. Uh, they're a Canadian innovation company focused on advancing accessibility of digital media. They offer technical services, a post-production web video captioning and description, live remote captioning, like you're seeing right now, uh, powered by speech text access, and consults on information and communication issues, policy, and inclusive digital media practices for organizations. For more information on inclusive media and design and CapScribe, the Caption Script Software Service, visit www.inclusivemedia.ca. So they are donating the captioning service today for free. If you wish to access the captions or see how this would look and work in a webinar environment, under your window menu, choose Show Closed Captions or the keyboard shortcut. So I'd like to thank Lambda and Inclusive Media for helping us reach a broader community with today's webinar that we're hosting. So I want to talk a little bit uh, about what Moodle is. We have people from different sectors here. Some of you, most of you probably know what Moodle is. But just in case you aren't aware, Moodle is an open source learning management system. So essentially, it is a platform where uh, teachers or universities or community-based groups like ours can create online courses. These courses can include notes, discussion forums, assignments, uh, you can host videos, and you can have a lot of collaborative learning like wikis, forums, etc. So it's like a textbook, but it's online and interactive. Just to give you an idea of the size and scope of Moodle, there are around the world currently 81,000 registered sites. 
233 countries and over 7 million courses. So the size and scope of Moodle is really large. Now, at the Neil Squire Society, through using online learning, we've been able to reach people with disabilities across Canada. So we only have five regional offices, and some of those dots are very tightly nested. But it's really allowed us to reach beyond the brick and mortars of our offices and connect to people with disabilities regardless of where they live. So that gives you a bit of background on who we are and who's helped us make this happen today and what we do with Moodle. Um, I'd like to introduce Ryan Thomas, who is the Moodle administrator, e-learning coordinator, and general all-around tech good guy for the Neil Squatter Society. You there, Ryan? Yeah, I'm here, Chad. Uh, well, I can see my microphone bar moving there, so I believe I'm transmitting. And I also get to wear the developer hat sometimes. Yeah, just sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask Ryan some questions, and uh, he's going to help enlighten all of us. So what what do we mean by accessibility? What are some common disability use cases that someone may have to consider when in an online environment? Okay, well, when, when we're talking about accessibility in-house, we mean a little more than accessibility. Uh, let me just qualify that. Uh, generally, accessibility means can you get at the content regardless of your abilities. Um, we like to go a step further and make sure you can also use the content on top of getting at it. But uh, let's just talk about a few of the use groups. So there's vision, and we, we work with uh, the vision visually impaired communities. That can go from blindness to just making sure that screens are laid out for persons with low vision. So um, in general, we have to make sure our sites work with screen readers. Um, that includes dynamic content, videos, pretty much everything. Um, for low vision, we just need to make sure the layout's good. Uh, cause when you can only see 10% of the screen at a time, scrolling is a huge deal. Uh, we also make sure that our content degrades nicely when or nicely, not nicely, nicely when you go into high contrast mode in your operating system. Uh, for auditory, we work with uh, some of our clients have hard of, are hard of hearing. Um, mostly that's just captioning our multimedia content. For uh, cognitive barriers, we tried to, well, we've actually done a lot of work around addressing uh, cognitive barriers. We, we've overhauled the navigation of our Moodle site in some pretty pretty big ways. Um, and the, the other thing we've added is some text-to-speech soft, uh, well, text-to-speech app that basically will read the site out and help with um, literacy barriers. It also highlights the text as it goes along. So, oh, so the, the other group we work with are, actually we work with in a large way are the or persons with uh, mobility impairments. Uh, that can run the range from being uh, just keyboard and mouse restricted all the way to having to use um, speech speech control, like dragon naturally speaking. So uh, some persons have no hardware interaction with their computers and uh, have a lot of the same usability issues as screen reader users. And that's, that's great. Thanks. Pretty high level. But. Great. So, if an organization or an institution was considering exploring online learning uh, and having an LMS, why is Moodle a, a good choice to consider? Well, Moodle's a pretty good choice. Well, actually, it's a very good choice to consider because they actually they care about accessibility. Um, They've been taking it seriously since late into Moodle 1, and when they redesigned it for Moodle 2, uh, accessibility was actually on the radar. A lot of uh, a lot of software packages, they kind of try and kludge accessibility in after the fact, and it never really makes it. Moodle also has a staff member that's tasked with the accessibility of their product, and they're in one of the, well, their headquarters is in one of the countries that uh, takes accessibility most seriously, that being Australia. They really can't get away with being inaccessible. No, on top of okay, that, they're built good on to know. Yeah, their JavaScript library, Yahoo user interface, is also 
uh, pretty accessible from the get-go. So a lot of the framework that Moodle's even built on is accessible to start with. Good to know. I'm going to attempt to show the a video here of a JAWS user using uh, Moodle and kind of their first impressions. We'll see if this actually works. So please let me know in the chat box if this video comes through for you. Um, this YouTube video is previously captioned, um, perhaps not perfectly, but gives you a bit of an idea. It's about three minutes. So let's maybe take a look and see if this, this will work. And if not, we'll just continue forward. Um, well, I'm going to approach this as if I were just seeing this page for the first time. And, and the first thing that I would do seeing a page for the first time is just to read it through. And then that becomes less of an issue as I, my familiarity with a page increases. I wouldn't do that. So, But the first time through, I would just kind of want to hear what the elements of the page are. And what are you using to actually read the elements of the page? I am using uh, the screen reader I'm using at the moment. It's called JAWS for Windows. And this is a screen reader for those with uh, blindness or very low vision. Um, there are other solutions that magnify the screen if, if there is more vision. But in this instance, this is a, a blindness product. Okay, I'm going to stop it. There's a lot of stuff underneath there that I'm not going to get into right now, but um, it looks like there's a lot of markup here, a lot of heading elements and list elements and things like that, and that's good for accessibility because it gives a screen reader something to reference. Um, go back to the top of the page. And everything is here, and, and the links are, are pretty self-explanatory, and it uh, looks like I could access any of the elements of the course that I would need to access. Let me... Uh, Go to this simple quiz here. How can you just tell us briefly what your first impressions are of the Moodle accessibility? Sure. Um, in spending some time with this and playing with it, I've been uh, quite impressed, actually. It looks like there's been a lot of forethought put into the accessibility aspects of this. Um, there's a lot of um, page elements that have been used, markups, headers, um, labeled links for toolbars. Um, there are a lot of good things. I've seen some minor glitches, um, but it is a big, complicated system, so that's bound to happen. But overall, what I've seen is that nothing insurmountable is, has come up. Um, I think a lot of my confusion that has occurred has just been more of a matter of the learning curve of the system and not really so much accessibility related. Um, when I've worked through some things and, and figured out how they work, then I could do them again very easily. Um, I think overall, it looks like this is going to be a good uh, way to move. I mean, the accessibility looks like it's there. It looks like it's customizable. Um, it looks like it'll give us a lot more flexibility than other solutions out there will. Cool. Um, as an advanced user on campus, how would you compare the um, ease of use of Moodle to the current content management system of Angel? Um, I think Moodle is, is superior. Um, even things like scanning through lists of messages in a forum, uh, much more accessible. Um, there are a lot more elements in Angel that are not clickable, that are non-standard, and uh, Moodle seems to really stay away from those things. So um, it looks like it's a lot more workable. But I wanted to give you guys a bit of a, a first-hand user experience of how someone with no vision would access the Moodle site to give you sort of their first impressions. So, Ryan, I was curious. We, you talked a little bit how the Moodle team takes accessibility seriously. I was wondering, are there some problem areas? Is, is everything perfect? Is it all rainbows and unicorns? Or is there some issues with Moodle accessibility? Well, it's, it's almost rainbows and unicorns. Um, <laughs> There have been some, well, occasionally there there's an audit that comes along uh, that points out some gaps in Moodle, and 
as the fellow in the video was saying, it's it's a pretty big application, so they need people to make them aware of any any gaps they have. Uh, some of the some of the well, the biggest area of concern is really uh, the accessibility of the overlays that Moodle has. Uh, they use these modal overlays for their file picker and uh, a couple other functions in Moodle, and they the can be really difficult for they can be really difficult to use. I think uh, largely they're they're often technically accessible. You can get into them with a keyboard. You can perceive them with um, a screen reader, but you know they're in the wrong place on the page, or they just they give out uh, they, they don't give out enough information to effectively use them and understand them. So hopefully, going forward, um, the combination of Yahoo user interface library and Moodle core work will sort out the issues with uh, the file picker and just modal overlays in general. Okay, good to know. That's about um, it for, for current, yeah. In terms of future, you know, I know there's some uh, exciting changes coming with Moodle 2.4 and 2.5. Anything that you think that may actually pose some accessibility limitations as opposed to and, you know, I mean, a lot of these new things have opportunities, but there may also be some accessibility issues. Anything on the horizon that you foresee might look like stormy clouds ahead? Yeah, there's there's a big one. Um, it, it basically, it's, it comes down to jQuery making it into core. Um, now, this isn't going to make core less accessible, but uh, what jQuery is, it's a much, well, it's, it's a much easier to use JavaScript library uh, that will probably lead to some some big proliferation in third-party plugins. Now, the the issue with that is, um, I guess it lowers the bar a bit because jQuery is not inherently accessible, and a lot of a lot of uh, pre-written plugins in jQuery are not inherently accessible. So once those start finding their or worming their way into Moodle popular Moodle plugins, people are going to find the uh, issues cropping up, mainly with screen readers and to persons using uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, we're, yeah. we're, we're about two-thirds through the webinar here. We might go a minute or two over. What we would like to do now is actually demo some things around Moodle, around some things that are accessible in it, and some of the things that we've done and some of the things that you could do. So, uh, Ryan, if you want to set up the screen share here, do you know how to take control of this here? Yeah, okay, so I can, the application starts sharing, right? There we go, yeah. Okay, just uh, clicking through a whole bunch of dialog boxes. Okay. And is that showing up correctly on the screen here? Or is it cropped? There, it's a little bit cropped. With, there you go. That's it. Yeah. If any window goes over top of that, it's kind of like okay. putting a piece of paper or the projector. Oh. Okay. And the one thing you may wish to do is, um, actually, it might be a good thing to show people if they wanted to actually increase the bra like the zoom of the browser. How can anyone do that? Is that like a special trick, or is that actually an easy thing to do? Um. Well, you can usually do it from. Tools, well, in Firefox, you can do it from view, zoom, zoom in, zoom out. You can hold down the control key and scroll your mouse wheel. You can hold down the control key and use the plus and minus buttons. And yeah, you can do it from the menu. Um, you can also, I believe, get some magnification stock out of your operating system. Great. Okay. If uh, <clears throat> is there any like, if I know I have a user that perhaps has some visual impairments, is there a way to make their Moodle experience a little bit better? Something that I can do easily as like an admin? Yeah. Uh, when you go into their profile settings or when you're creating the account, there's a there's a little field that uh, just says screen reader, and if you set that to yes. Um, It'll make it, it makes Moodle friendlier to screen readers. It injects a bunch of extra uh, text, just additional cues. 
Um, the other thing you could do if someone has low vision um, is you could in, you could install a theme for them. Um, in Moodle, you can configure it to allow theme, themes for individual users and participants. And yeah, you can just find one that's more that has a more agreeable color scheme. Okay, great. Um, if someone wanted to test the accessibility of a particular page or a particular resource, what are some things they can do? I know it can be quite complicated and you can pay a lot of money for some real in-depth audits, but if someone just wanted to get a kind of baseline of information, can you give us some examples of things that we could do? Absolutely. Okay, so right now I'm sharing the Firefox browser. It's got some fantastic plugins for well, we're just doing some quick and dirty auditing of a given web page. So I'm going to go over to, uh, let's just stay on our testing pages here. I've installed this Wave toolbar. Um, is there, you used to not need a toolbar to do this, but Wave's made some changes uh, with regards to allowing you to post in, post in code. So it's just it's easier to use the toolbar now. Uh, you can turn on errors and alerts, errors features and alerts. This gives you a good visual representation of what might be wrong with your page. Like this is saying, I have JavaScript on the page. I've used some uh, YARIA landmarks. The heading level one here. I have an unordered list. So if something comes up in yellow, it's um, it's best uh, it's, it's best evaluated with a human being. Like this alert that I have a pop-up window. Uh, it's in yellow, but if there's anything in red, it's outright broken, and it can do a lot of very, very quick machine detection on that. Uh, gives you an idea of where you're at. Uh, the other things you can do, you can use the structure order, which will kind of give you an idea. Well, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. It'll, it'll give you the tab indexes of the page, so you see if you're skipping around in a really nonsensible way. Uh, you get new speed of right, and maybe, just scroll, Ryan, maybe just scroll a, a little bit slower as you scroll quickly. Okay. We just kind of get like chops and bits a little bit. Uh, thank you for updating me on that. <laughs> so here would be you know, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it tells you where you're going to be on the page. Uh, you can also look at your page as just text to see if it make if the sequence of your content is sensible. Uh, the other thing with just showing your page in text is you can see that Moodle adds some skip links, which if you're restricted to a keyboard and or uh, blind, it is much easier to navigate around a page when you don't have to hit the tab key to go through every link and every, every tabable item on the page. So if I were to hit enter on this skip to main content, then I'll be inside the main content. Uh, you can also skip over your sidebars, skip over each block in Moodle. So it's generally quite good. Um, the outline view in Wave shows you your headings, so you can see if it makes sense. Like if you just uh, if you have a heading level one, a heading level level two will be under it. Heading level three will be under that. It demonstrates the relationships between your content that a non-visual user would perceive. Also, a keyboard user in Opera can navigate by headings, so that it's pretty helpful. Um, I'm just going to move on to another tool. Uh, there's another tool, Fangs, which is pretty wonderful. Uh, you'll have to tell me if this actually shares, Chad. Is it, is it sharing Fangs right now? Yeah. I yeah, it sounds good, and I put a link to Fangs in the chat box if people would like to try this out. Okay. So what does Fangs do? Like Fangs is well, well, scraping this, the web page what me? And, and taking all the text and or, um, presenting it the way a screen reader user would hear it. So if you read this aloud, a screen reader user would hear page has seven headings and 18 links, Neil, Sires, uh, Neil Squire Society colon my home dash Internet Explorer. So that's the title of the page up top. Then it will say this page uh, link so skip to main content, heading level one. So essentially it, it gives you all the headings and link additional data that would be spoken to your screen reader user. If it makes no sense when you look at, uh, when you read it, it's probably not going to make a lot of sense to them. 
You can also get a headings view, which is actually similar to the one in Wave, and a links list. Uh, the links list can be really good because if you're, you, you can use it to see if your links are actually sensible. A screen reader user will sometimes will actually often navigate a page uh, just by looking at the links that are on the page. So an example, if every link says uh, click here or edit this or see, click to see more, that's not very informative to them. Whereas something like uh, click to see more about you know, our, our May 9th news article or click to read more about accessibility awareness, now that's, that's far more useful. And you can get a good overview of that with FANG. A couple things you can do t without tools, just to shift gears, uh, that a lot of people neglect is you can hold down control A on PC and that will just highlight all of the text on your page. Now if certain things don't get highlighted, like uh, a flash movie, then you know that uh, you know that your screen reader users and your your speech recognition users are going to have a lot. Well, they're going to have a lot of issues even trying to interact with the content. So Control A, select all. And then the other thing to do is to hit the keyboard key repeatedly to see if you can tell where you are. Like the home link here is highlighted, so I can see what my focus is. I'm using the tab key. Which, uh, which key are you using, right? Tab to go back and forth. So hitting tab a lot and control A can just give you a good idea of what a person who can't use a mouse is going to experience on your page. Great. We, uh, I can't believe it's already 10.30. We have a couple more things we'd like to show you guys. If yeah. people have to leave, you're not going to hurt our feelings. It is recorded. Uh, so you can come back to it. Um, I would like to give people and give an idea of some simple things they can do when they um, design a course page, just very quickly, and then show you a couple examples of customizations we've done to Moodle. So it'll probably take us another five or so minutes here to kind of show these things, just give you a heads up on time. Uh, so Ryan, fairly quickly, if someone was like making a course page in Moodle, what are a few things they should okay, do? Okay, well, basic first thing you got to think about what your content is. Uh, just thinking about whatever you're publishing as content first is very important. Semantic content means uh, try and represent the content <laughs> using the tags that actually represent what it means. So if it's a heading, use a heading tag. If it's a list, use a list tag. If your information isn't a table, try to avoid using tables. Um, you can use tables to style, but it's generally, it hurts the usability of your, your product. Um, then filters. Uh, filters can be a very, okay, filters in Moodle are kind of like macros. Um, you'll, I'm just going to share, share something else, um, or share another application. Uh, fil filters let you enter some shorthand information that will, uh, you you end okay you en you enter shorthand and you get out something highly useful like an example would be typing out a single line that evokes an entire YouTube video and a big player around it. So if you're a content designer and you find yourself using some fancier features, uh, it might be better to build a filter rather than enter all of the really difficult uh, hand coded parts. I'm trying to just start an application share with my notepad so that I can, no, oh, I cannot share my notepad. So let's go back to Firefox. Maybe just, uh, maybe show how you're using a filter to yeah, show, I can show the video. I uh, YouTube okay, videos, right for example. This account. So, that's okay. I need to it's off an idea. To work, but Okay, so the way this was entered, um, I'll try and write it out in my caption box. Actually, I'll, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll put the filter for this page inside the text chat. That should work. So what we typed was here in the text chat, uh, SWFYT for YouTube, stages of career development presentation, and then the address and wide. So, 
what that did was it invoked this introduction to career research video and wrapped it in this handy dandy YouTube player that is keyboard accessible. So as I tab through it, the buttons turn white. And if I hit spacebar or enter, I can start the video playing or forward it or adjust the volume. So that's a, it's a lot easier to just type that little filter that I, sh I showed you in the, in the chat box than it would be to hand code this page, <coughs> which would involve using all of the YouTube embedded player stuff and a bunch of JavaScript around it to make it accessible and all sorts of craziness. So yes, filters and semantic markup. Yeah, we originally started using um, or looked at building an accessible YouTube player was when we first started, and this is a while back now, but first starting putting YouTube videos into our Moodle course, the play button wasn't called the play button, the screen reader, it was called button 16. Like, what does button 16 mean to anybody? The, the, the controls were not ideal. And Google and the rapid start development thing is continually kind of changing things. So the API continues to change so that this can help um, address uh, screen reader users accessing it. We'll show you one more thing. Um, uh, and this is a text-to-speech engine that Ryan has built. Do you want to maybe sure. give people um, a little bit of that? Okay, Don't let so people go. I have, to, I have to throw my microphone into my earpiece here, right? So I'll give you the lowdown. Yeah, all we've done was we've yeah, added a be fun. page, <laughs> which has this uh, player here with play, pause, forward, back, volume adjustment. And that's going to automatically do some magic with Google Translate and build a verbal version of the page. So I'm going to try and get it playing here. I am <sighs> most people make their playthrough life-based on what they are good at while successfully avoiding what they are bad at. Ideally, the public school system shouldn't cover what students are good at. So did that actually come through, Chad? Okay. It was a bit quiet, but I it was a good proof of concept. You could hear uh, that going. And Sarah in the chat box asked, can I have that? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Uh, Ryan built a pilot of this with Moodle 1.9. And then we worked with Uhu, which is a Moodle <coughs> developer. And they helped us, and Ryan collaborated with them to make this a block that's published to the Moodle community. So this is something that you can download and install for free on your Moodle site. So yeah, fraud by all means. Um, and you know, it's not like a screen reader that's going to replace browsing Moodle for some of the vision issue, but it will certainly help people with literacy issues, um, comprehension issues, and, and just different learning styles. Some people just listen, learn better auditory. Um, we have gone a little bit over, as I seem to do every time I plan everything. So. Um, I won't keep people any longer. What I will do is uh, in the next day to two, I will post a recording of this. I will do my best to include the caption feed that was provided here today and also um, provide the slides. So I'll send an email to those that registered and I will publish it on the Neil Squire and probably Lambda website. Um, <clears throat> if you would like more information, about uh, all the events that are going on around the world today, please check out www.globalaccessibilityawarenessday.org. There's a list of many events going on around the world and also some other things that you can maybe try doing to get a bit of an idea of a person with disability uses a computer. Try using your computer for an hour without a mouse. Try using your computer without your monitor and it'll really give you a first-hand experience of what some users go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so we're very happy to present this. I hope there are some good takeaways for you guys that you can use along the way. And if you have questions, you need help with accessibility, 
um, or want to talk about some other Moodle things, feel free. I put my email in the chat box. We'd be happy to talk to you and collaborate with you guys on some projects. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Cheers.